Last night, if I hadn't grabbed your arm, you would have walked on that bridge whether you wanted to or not. And earlier, I had to protect you from the wind that was seeking you out. What would have happened if you hadn't protected me? Since you don't have enough power, the wind would have made you lose your way and perhaps even killed you by pushing you into a ravine. But the fog was the real thing last night. Two things could have happened to you in the fog. You could have walked across the bridge to the other side, or you could have fallen to your death. Either would have depended on power. One thing, however, would have been for sure. If I had not protected you, you would have had to walk on that bridge regardless of anything. That is the nature of power. As I told you before, it commands you and yet it is at your command. Last night, for instance, the power would have forced you to walk across the bridge, and then it would have been at your command to sustain you while you were walking. I stopped you because I know you don't have the means to use power, and without power, that bridge would have collapsed. Your battle of power was neat. It didn't consume you. You are consuming yourself now with your own crappy thoughts and doubts. That's your way of indulging yourself. The fog was impeccable with you. You have an infinity with it. It gave you a stupendous bridge, and that bridge will be there in the fog from now on. It will reveal itself to you over and over, until someday you will have to cross it. Power is a very weird affair. In order to have it and command it, one must have power to begin with. It's possible, however, to store it, little by little, until one has enough to sustain oneself in a battle of power. What is a battle of power? What happened to you last night was the beginning of a battle of power. The scenes that you beheld were the seat of power. Someday they will make sense to you. Those scenes are most meaningful. Can you tell me their meaning yourself, Don Juan? No. Those scenes are your own personal conquest, which you cannot share with anyone. But what happened last night was only the beginning, a skirmish. The real battle will take place when you cross that bridge. What's on the other side? Only you will know that, and only you will know what's at the end of that trail through the forest. But all that is something that may or may not happen to you. In order to journey through those unknown trails and bridges, one must have enough power of one's own. What happens if one doesn't have enough power? Death is always waiting, and when a warrior's power wanes, death simply taps him. Thus, to venture to the unknown without any power is stupid. One will only find death. The world is a mystery. This, what you're looking at, is not all there is to it. There is so much more to the world, so much more. In fact, it's endless. So when you're trying to figure it out, all you're really doing is trying to make the world familiar. You and I are right here, in the world you call real, simply because we both know it. You don't know the world of power, therefore you cannot make it into a familiar scene. You know that I really can't argue your point but my mind can't accept it either. You're really crazy, but that's all right. I know how difficult it is to live like a warrior. If you would have followed my instructions and performed all the things I taught you, you would have now had enough power to cross that bridge, enough power to see and to stop the world. But why should I want power, Don Juan? You can't think of a reason now. However, if you would store enough power, the power itself would find you a good reason. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Why did you want power yourself, Don Juan? I'm like you. I didn't want it. I couldn't find a reason to have it. I had all the doubts that you have and never followed the instructions I was given. Or, I never thought I did. Yet, in spite of my stupidity, I stored enough power. And one day, my personal power made the world collapse. But why would anyone wish to stop the world? Nobody does. That's the point. It just happens. And once you know what it's like to stop the world, you'll realize there is a reason for it. You see, one of the arts of the warrior is to collapse the world for a specific reason, and then restore it again in order to keep on living. He stood up and stretched his arms, yawning. It is early. We must wait until the fog gathers on top of the mountain, and then you must stand alone on the slab and thank the fog for its favors. Let it come and envelop you. I'll be nearby to assist, if need be. Somehow the prospect of staying alone in that fog terrified me. I felt idiotic for reacting in such an irrational manner. You cannot leave these desolate mountains without saying your thanks. He said in a firm tone, A warrior never turns his back to power without atoning for the favors received. <laughs>